Blog pause. Dev inside Prima prismatic deep dive. Hey guardians, game playing team here. Starting with the release of Stasis Beyond Light in 2020, continuing with subclass 3.0 during the year of the Witch Queen, and most recently the release of Strand and Life Off. We've been hard at work building out the full kits of abilities, aspects, and fragments that you've assembled into your perfect monster slaying machine. The builds you've crafted helped you overcome insurmountable odds, taking down powerful foes and ensuring the safety of the last city for now. With the final shape looming, the threat has never been more imminent and the stakes have never been higher. We knew that if a humanity was going to go up against a witness, we had to pull out all the stops, which literally makes sense lore wise, right? Like we're actually lore accurate guardians now or getting close to it. For the first time, players will be able to wield the powers of light and darkness simultaneously unlocking combinations of abilities never before possible. Today, we'd like to give you a brief overview of the Final Shape's new prismatic subclass, including the suite of abilities available, how you expand your capabilities, and the unique gameplay it brings to the table. The prismatic subclass is familiar, but with a twist. Your super, melee, grenade, and aspect slots will feature a selection of light and darkness abilities from all five damage types. You can also select from all available movement modes and class abilities, including the subclass specific ones such as Phoenix Dives, Acrobats Dodge, and Thruster. Our main goal for Prismatic is to enable new and interesting build crafting combinations that lead to new types of gameplay so that we can keep the game feeling fresh. Now, as part of this, some of the abilities we've chosen are ones that we think have been underused since their initial release and have exciting interactions with the rest of the roster. In many cases, we've adjusted how certain aspects function to specifically enable these unique interactions. With Prismatic, we wanted to make an immediate impact. From the very first mission of the Final Shape, you'll have access to a complete starting Prismatic build with a set of Light and Darkness abilities, aspects, and a full set of fragments. Let's dive into the details of what these starting builds have to offer, as well as the rest of the abilities you'll be wielding. So starting with Prismatic Hunter, Instinct is honed over years to respond in an instance. God damn it, look at this. Oh my God. Look at the color, the fragments. We've got our Shatter Dive. We've got a Void Aspect in here. Rocking a Swarm Grenade. And then our Transcendent Abilities up here. The Prismatic Hunter is evasive and maneuverable. Grappling around the battlefield and leaping to advantageous positions with Ascension. The starting Prismatic build enables that maneuverability with Winter Shroud providing a handy debuff. That Stylish Executioner, which now triggers by defeating an enemy afflicted by any subclass debuff, can activate from. Providing easily accessible invisibility to reposition to wherever you need to be with safety. He's got 37 resilience. Calm down. Calm down. It's, it's everything else. You'll be able to choose between the different line and darkness abilities from each column below. All right. Hold up. Hold up. Oh, boy. Let me let me zoom out real quick. Supers. Storm's Edge. Golden Gun. Silence of Squall. Silk Strike. Shadow Shot. Deadfall. Class abilities. Marksman Dodge. Gambler's Dodge. Acrobat, Acrobat's Dodge. Got all of our ba base jumps, including Blink, which we can... We can cycle to whatever. All our different melee combinations, okay? Our grenade abilities and aspects. Everything here can be mixed and matched, right? What is what is being left off here, guys? I don't see Blade Barrage. I don't see um, Pole Dancer. I don't see Spectral Blades. So there's definitely a lot that's left off. Interesting. So they're giving us the actual abilities and supers that we will be able to mix up with Prismatic. It does say starting. Oh, starting, starting indicates abilities that are included in your starting prismatic build. Excuse me, Bungie. I forgot. You're in over delivery mode. Excuse me. During the first mission of the final shape. All right. So as we unlock everything, then we'll get access to all of it. So this is just for the first mission. Now, prismatic type, a coalescence of light and darkness into an unbreakable bulwark, gripped in an unstoppable fist. Damn right. Hot damn it. We got knocked out, baby. We, we got we got our stage. We got thunderclap in this. Oh! Now the prismatic titan excels at disabling enemies to make them easy targets for high impact follow ups. Drinker's last shackle grenade and diamond slants are all potent primers for a subsequent consecration, thunderclap, or powerful unbreakable blast. Their starting build allows them to freeze targets with diamond lance, which can be created from any ability final blow, and wind up a fully charged thunderclap to remove the threat from the fight in one fell swoop. So again starting here this is what you get on mission one guys we've got twilight arsenal which is the new void super thunder crash blade fury hammer soul and glacial quake hold on hold on, hold on. the things that actually have starting next to it is that the only things we're starting off with uh, okay the things that we have 
under starting is what we're getting now we, we got in full circle here <laughs> we, got, we got in full circle my question is are we leaving behind everything else so like for instance hammer assault we will not get that as a starting super that we can mix up in prismatic will we eventually in the launch of the finer shape and maybe they'll say more as we get further down will we get burning maul see what i mean how much you want to bet the nerf to well the radiance is just not including it in prismatic what I, what did i just say what did i just say all right all right prismatic warlock truth lies in the seams between light and darkness all right so we've got the prismatic warlocks brings an army to bear summoning a horde of bleak watchers hellions and threadlings in the blink of an eye the starting builds let them lock down entire rooms with Bleak Watcher and Penumbra Blast, and their ability damage, including damage caused by shattering the frozen targets, kickstarts Feed the Void, granting grenade energy to start the new cycle. Dude, it, this is, Warlocks look so damn good. But, all right, so starting, you've got Nova Bomb, IP Defining Indeed. Uh, you also got Winter's Wrath, Phoenix Dive, see all these different starting abilities. But Song of Flame we'll have to get later on. Storm Trance, Needle Storm. All right. So these are currently what we have as far as what we can mix up, which still looks to be incredible synergy wise. Let's just let's just continue because I'm curious to know there's because there's a lot of things here that are being left off these lists. I'm curious to know, will we get that at some point? Now, explore your potential. While you start off with a fairly focused initial loadout, you'll quickly expand your tool set and possible combinations. As you continue through the pale heart of the Traveler, you'll uncover the remaining abilities, aspects, and fragments as mission rewards, as well as unlocking them through post-campaign quests and as collectibles hidden in the world. All right, so everything else, aspects, fragments, and other remaining abilities, they will be as mission rewards through post-campaign quests and just collectibles. Interesting. Okay. Our ultimate goal is that as you progress in your journey to save the Traveler and humanity, you're able to continually experiment with new build crafting options and find novel ways to tackle the challenges ahead of you. There is no currency to earn to unlock these new build crafting elements. When you find a prismatic chest in the world, or even after a particular tough battle, they're immediately granted and available for use. All right. So no like strand medallions farming up that currency, then purchasing there at the Puka Pond. You immediately got it. Okay. Now, part of building Prismatic was ensuring that every option and combination felt viable across a variety of content and difficulties. So most of the abilities you've seen here have also had a tuning pass that will share in more details in the lead up to the Final Shapes release. Aspects that were damage type specific have had the requirements loosened when using Prismatic. For example, Diamond Lance and Feed the Void act activate from ability defeats of any damage type, not just Stasis and Void. And Stylus Executioner activates when defeating an enemy afflicted by an elemental debuff, not just void. Now, let me get this right. Aspects that were damage time specific have had the requirements loosened when using Prismatic. So, if I was to still use Diamond Lance within my Stasis only build, not Prismatic, it will still, will it still be locked to Stasis or will that same loosened requirements be applicable there? Because it says right here, has had the requirements loosened when using Prismatic. So it sounds like Prismatic only. All right, now break past your limits. Prismatic is more than using familiar abilities and new combinations. We also want to create new gameplay to showcase the player's newfound mastery of the elements. Enter Transcendence. It's a result of the collision of light and darkness that your guardian can now control and enables the use of never before seen power. When you're using Prismatic, you'll notice a new bar below your super energy meter. This is the new indicator for the Transcendence Light and Darkness meter. You see it right there, guys, literally filling up here both meters. So let me just say the UI changes in general that we saw yesterday look really good. Now, when you deal light aligned damage, arc, solar, and void, or apply light aligned buffs or debuffs, the light bar on the left fills. When you deal darkness aligned damage, stasis, or strand, or apply darkness aligned buffs or debuffs, the darkness bar on the right fills. Kinetic damage fills both bars at a reduced rate, but that rate increases when either bar is filled, making it a solid choice to help a lagging bar catch up. When both bars are full meet in the middle, Transcendence is available. While Transcendent, your melee and grenade energy are instantly refreshed and regenerate more quickly. Dealing damage with a grenade further increases your melee regeneration rate and vice versa. Your weapon damage is slightly increased and you're more resistant to incoming damage. That's really nice. Now, our goal for Transcendence, both in terms of uptime and potency, is that it feels like a miniature super that's only readily available when your loadout and playstyle interweave light and darkness together in harmony. Ah, okay. So again, they, they want you to, to cross over that aisle and, and bridge those things together. 
Now, being transcendent also allows you to break the shields of special combatants standing in your way on your journey through the pale heart of the travel. These combatants have been bound by the witness and are invulnerable to incoming damage otherwise. So it's a mechanic we're definitely going to have to invest in. Now, in addition to these boosts, while transcendent, you also have a new grenade, one unique to each class that deals both light and darkness damage type. That's what we saw yesterday. Now, the Hunter Hellfire Spike. Throw a device charged with stasis matter and solar energy that attaches to surfaces or targets, then erupts into a slowing storm. After a short duration, the device ignites, creating a deadly scorching cyclone. Hot damn. I need to see this in PvP. Now, tie an electrified snare. Throw an explosive device energized with strand matter and arc energy that detonates in a supercharged suspending burst. The suspended target takes heavy damage over time and chains jolting lightning to any nearby targets. I'm trying to think on this. Like, you can... Say you have like an unstoppable and overload champion standing next to each other. You could throw this grenade out there. It will suspend the unstop and the overload. But then the arc energy that detonates with the jolt would then stun the overload. That's pretty nuts. Okay. Now, Warlock Freezing Singularity. Throw a mass of void energy in stasis matter. On impact, it deploys a miniature black hole orbited by a halo of slowing ice. After a short duration, the black hole implodes, suppressing and dealing heavy damage to all nearby targets. Interesting. So, orbited by a halo of slowing ice. Like a combination of uh, dust-filled grenades with... I don't know. I mean, I guess it'd be like a, a suppression slash vortex combo too. Now, in multitudes, now let's talk about prismatic fragments. One of the challenges we identified early on was that a lot of the power from our single damage type subclasses comes from the network of many interconnected gameplay loops the player can dip into when they focus their build crafting on a single element. When the player's focus is split between multiple elements, we still need to provide enough opportunities for stacking powerful synergies, as well as providing value to the new transcendence loop. To help us solve that problem, We've increased most prismatic aspect fragment slot allotments to three, with a few of our most potent options staying at two fragment slots. You're going to need the extra space. With prismatic, from day one of the final shape, you'll be able to find or earn a total of 21 fragments, a sizable bump over the typical 14 to 16. Some are reimaginations or combinations of existing fragments, and some are brand new. Unlike our core damage types, fragments in prismatic are unlocked for all of your characters as soon as you acquire them. Fantastic. If you finish the campaign on your Hunter and you want to start on your Titan, your Titan will have all the fragments you've unlocked on your Hunter. Dude, that's about time. Right? About time! Here's a look at some of the fragment options you can look forward to. So we've got the facet of balance, rapidly defeating targets with light damage grants melee energy, rapidly defeating targets with dark damage grants grenade energy. Okay? And again, if you're rocking both weapon types and, you know, dipping into multiple energy or, or between darkness and light with your abilities you'll be able to feed off of that facet of bravery defeating targets with grenades grants volatile rounds to your void weapons defeating targets with power melee final blows grants unraveling rounds to your strand weapons hot damn there's probably going to be like direct synergy like direct elemental types that, that feed into each other more so this is going to make me go okay i need to go for a complete void strand kit now facet of dawn starting this is a starting fragment. Power melee hits against targets makes you radiant. Power melee final blows makes both you and nearby allies radiant. Okay, that's really nice. Facet of Defiance. Finishers create a detonation that either jolts, scorches, slows, severs, or makes targets volatile based on the damage type of your equipped super. Okay. Facet of Dominance. Your void grenades weaken. Your arc grenades jolt. Oh my god. So, your void grenades apply weaken. Your arc grenades apply jolt. When we get up here and we start talking about some of these grenades that can dip into both of those elemental types, dude, you get the best of both worlds. Imagine getting a void grenade that also applies arc damage in some way. And boom, you got weakened and jolt, jolt feeding off the weakened too. Uh, Facet of Generosity, defeating targets while transcendent creates orbs of powers for your allies. Facet of Grace, damaging targets with kinetic weapons grants you bonus transcendence energy. Defeating targets with your super grants your nearby allies bonus transcendence energy. Let me just say this. Kinetic weapons. I don't know. I mean, depending on how much bonus we get, you know, I, I like kinetic weapons for sure. And there's, you know, perks like kinetic shrimmers. But in terms of transcendence, you're going to really want to rock both elemental types or multiple elemental types, you know, whether it's like a strand weapon in that top slot or, or a stasis weapon and uh, something in that energy slot. Passive hope. While you have an elemental buff, your class ability regenerates more quickly. Facet of Justice, while transcendent, your ability final blows explode. Wow, that's just all, all ability final blows will explode. That's nuts. 
This is wild transcendent, okay? Now, facet of protection. While surrounded by enemies, you are more resistant to incoming damage, okay? Facet of purpose. Picking up an orb of power grants either Amplify, Restoration, Frost Armor, Woven Mail, or Overshield based on the damage type of your equipped super. Facet of Ruin. This increases the size and damage of the bursts when you shatter a Stasis Crystal or Frozen Target and increases the size of Solar Ignitions. So right here, I, I'm going to want to go a Stasis Solar Combo build, right? Run in there, get the Ignition off, apply slow, get the, get the Stasis Shatter off. The crossover here is going to be nuts. We're truly excited at the new possibilities that Prismatic brings from combining abilities in brand new ways to exploring more build crafting options than ever before. We look forward to seeing what you all come up with as we venture forth into this new era of Destiny 2. All right, guys, that is your blog post for today. Now, let me just say this. Uh, it, it does appear that not everything is going to be available for Prismatic at the launch of the final shape. I wouldn't be surprised, though, that if we get these things throughout the episodes. It almost sounds like, you know, really the year of Witch Queen, where every single season brought us a new 3.0 subclass. And what I would suspect is every episode is probably going to bring us more abilities, more supers here to, to pull into Prismatic. And then simultaneously, I'm assuming they're going to give us more supers because we're getting Storm's Edge is the new super for, for Hunter. Uh, we've got Twilight Arsenal, which is the new super for Titan. And we got Song of Flame, which is the new super for Warlock. What are the chances that we're going to get new supers every single episode? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Slap that like button like your mama told you right.